My whole goal is just to help you become a better Warzone 2 player. So today I'm going to be coaching you through a bunch of different clips and scenarios. Now we've got five clips in total. Some are good and some, well, let's just say we can learn from. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Now this first clip right here is where I think a lot of you struggle in Warzone 2, which is how to approach fights and how to position yourself. So we're actually going to start this one off here by popping a UAV. Now let me just quickly say, I know that UAVs are harder to come by and they're not always a possibility. That's where you do really need to prioritize cash flow and prioritize rotating to buy stations so that you can try to keep UAVs up as much as possible. You know, right here, we've got one team on the map, and you can see just how much easier approaching this fight and positioning is because we know exactly what we're pushing into. How many enemies? Where are they in relation to us? Are they close together or spread out? So we're going to go ahead and push here. Now, when we talk about approaching a fight... The number one thing that I want to do when approaching a fight is try to keep my element of surprise. If we can get a down and a thirst quickly and take an enemy out of the fight, that's obviously going to give us a pretty big advantage. That element of surprise is crucial. When we talk about positioning, I'm looking for two things, and there's two things that you want to think about. Number one is going to be your cover. If you get caught out in the open, which you're going to see me do here, and then I'm going to correct myself, you're in a really bad spot because you can get crossfired. There's a lot of things that can happen. And then we do want to think about high ground. You know, right here, we're able to get that initial knock that allows us to take that enemy out of the fight by the way we are playing trios here we're playing duo trios now right here i make the mistake of not reloading and when i'm in this position in this moment right here t captain x goes down right here t cap goes down and i'm completely caught out in the open right i don't have cover from anywhere there's not really anywhere that i can go i could probably play this rock right here but i am pushing closer to them and i'm in potential distance of getting hit by my own airstrike so so I actually end up pulling back and resetting this fight a little bit. I just try to make it up the hill, try to break this line of sight, at which point I can pop the another UAV that we have. We can quickly plate up. Notice that TCAP got up right there, and they're kind of pushing away from us a little bit. They're in a bad spot as well. So now they're trying to regain just a little bit in these buildings. But now, all of a sudden, we talk about the re-engage. I reloaded the RPK. I'm full-plated, and we are right back in. Once again, focusing on our cover and our positioning. I'm playing high ground right here. I know where he is on the UAV, and I oversee him. But let's play it out a scenario right here where he shoots back at me, right? Say I get absolutely fried here. I've got plenty of cover. So this is where I don't need to push this just yet. Now we go ahead, we get that down and thirst, we tag up enemy number two, and now it's a 1v1 scenario, right? You want to be winning your 1v1s, you should have confidence in your 1v1s, especially when you have information. So now I'm just going to go ahead and push up here. I'm going to go ahead, I see him around the corner, we hit our shots, and we're able to get that down and thirst. So as we play this back here, let's go ahead and watch it full speed, this way you can really see it in action. Let's go ahead and pull it from about here. Right now, I'm not going to do this for all the clips today, but I do want to watch this one full speed, just because, as I mentioned, I think it's where a lot of you struggle, approaching fights and positioning. By the way, if you found this first breakdown at all helpful, make sure to subscribe down below. I'm a 3KD player, and my whole goal is just to help you improve. I do videos just about every single day for you, so if you are looking to get better, make sure you are subscribed. If you're subscribed already, thank you so much for the continued support make sure you hit that thumbs up button oh wait what? i can't see that guy one's closer to you I'm yeah gonna get back and try to solve. i didn't see who that was it's not them they're probably in the city somewhere they did a black side that's how i saw they were in our game We got high ground I'm here, so we're in a building. really good spot. My mortar. He pushed further back. He's running. Okay. Job. So clip number two here was actually submitted by a member of the community, and this is how I really want to do this series moving forward. I would much rather break down your clips and really take a look at what you're doing well and what you're struggling with. So if you have a clip that you want reviewed, check the pinned comment down below. And the biggest thing is do not hesitate to submit. PC, console, good, bad, do not hesitate to submit it. Now jumping in here, we're going to be taking a look at this end game breakdown, this end game clutch situation, and he does a perfect job of playing one of the newest features in Warzone 2, which is the water. Now Mini Royale 
loadout trios. Unfortunately, this guy's sitting on his loadout, and he doesn't have the best guns. So he's got to find a way to get loadout here if he wants any chance to win. Now, he notices this guy. When we talk about movement, I always talk about how dolphin diving makes you a harder target to hit. I mean, look right here, guys. He, this guy jumps vertical and is able to get behind cover. That makes him a really hard target. And then he's got another teammate that's right there as well. Now, like, he ends up getting peppered, and we go underwater. Now, when you are underwater, guys, not when your head is peeking above. When you are underwater, you are a very hard target to hit because they can't really see you. And most importantly, even if you shoot where you think they are, it doesn't always connect. So underwater allows you to rotate. It allows you to plate up. We're going to see him reload underwater. We're going to see him swap guns underwater. It Underwater is a really good way to kind of rotate when you have no other option. And you can, of course, peek up and shoot if you really need to. Now, once again, he's going to go underwater here, and he's going to go ahead and rotate. So he's going to go ahead and push. He's going to take a different angle. He's going to reload this gun real quick, puts another six rounds in, and now he's at least in a little bit of a better spot. Now, going back to the last clip, right? In the last clip, we talked about approaching fights and positioning, specifically that element of surprise, which is what he gets right here. He kind of creeps up, and he's able to get that first down. Now, a lot of you, and I want you to think about this. If you're playing trios, right, and you get shot, what is the first thing that you tell your teammates? I got shot from over here. So he does a good job of not overselling for the thirst. He pulls back. He's thinking about enemy number two. And sure enough, enemy number two pushes right up to him. Now, he is able to get that thirst. But the mistake that he makes right here is he forgets about enemy number three. So enemy number three ends up just absolutely torching him. And he's right back in the water. Right back underneath. He's able to plate up. He's able to regain a little bit. And he does even swap his guns. If you notice right here, he swaps underwater. There's no animation when you... You swap underwater, but he's going to use this to rotate. He swaps to the Icarus right here. He kind of creeps up just a little bit, and then he's finally able to get this team wipe, and then he's finally able to get his loadout. So right there, he's able to tag that guy, and there it is. Pretty easy team wipe, but let's continue to focus on this clutch right here. Five other teams. He's got 10, now nine other people alive, and he's now in an okay spot to get his loadout. He's not in the best spot to get it, but he is in a decent spot. He's actually part of the coaching program. He's running the RPK and the sniper here, which I told him that he absolutely needs to not do anymore. You want to run a long range and then a mid range or close range, depending on your loadout. But RPK, Lockman, Fennec, Basilic, not Basilic, um, the, the mini Bach is a good option. There's a lot of good SMGs right now. In terms of the snipers, you can run the AK-74U, the Hur or the cast off 74U, the Hurricane, but he's just taking pop shots right there let's go ahead and fast forward just a little bit so he's able to get a few kills i want to pull up to right here so he's gonna go ahead teammate goes down and kind of has a somewhat general idea where, but not 100% sure. So as he rotates, he's got one bullet left in the signal. And he's going to push up and get absolutely smoked from this left side right here. Now, he's able to get behind cover, right? That's where we always talk about positioning-wise. You want to be paying attention to your cover here. He knows that he has the rock. And he's just going to go ahead and take advantage of the last bullet that he has. He's going to replay it real quick. And then we really get into this end game where he perfectly uses this feature. He perfectly uses the water to rotate. And he sent this to me, and I was like, this is just a really clean all-around clutch. A really smart play that a lot of us probably don't make. I think even myself may not think about doing this. We're, he just gets a kill on the water here. Let's go ahead and fast forward to the part where I want to get to. So he's just going to be able to get this guy swimming. See how that guy's swimming above the water? You want to be below the water when you're actually swimming. And now he's going to go ahead and push up the stairs right here. Now, in this moment, it's him and his teammate. He's got three other enemies alive, 12 kills so far. No ammo in the sniper, so got to be really careful about that. And he's just going to play a little bit of high ground. Really good job here of playing high ground and cover, right? Cover's the most important thing, but he's in circle. He's got cover, and he has his high ground. He's kind of overlooking. Now it's a 2v1v1. He's got final circle. Keep in mind with the uh, mini Royale, we get this final circle right here. And he's going to go ahead and fly down. Now, once again, he just gets in the water. He gets in the water. He protects himself. He reloads, and then he sees this guy actually over here, which I did not see the first time that I took a look at this. But he's going to catch a quick glimpse of this enemy moving right there. So he's going to go ahead and challenge this guy he's going to get the kill at which point it's now a 1v1 so he's going to go ahead and challenge up here be able to cleanly get that kill down in thirst and watch this play now a lot of us don't make this play right here but he's actually going to swim all the way around right he's going to go flank all the way around using the water and keep in mind you can't hear when somebody's underwater so he's just going to play underneath he's going to see what he can find he perfectly flanks that guy who knew right if you were to think about this because of this situation right here which 
shooting a gun, the audio is very clear. So this enemy, this last one's going to be somewhere right over on my mouse, right? Well, he knows that fighting just happened where they are. So when when Jamo here pushes all the way around and kind of flanks this underwater, this is exactly where that guy's looking. That guy thinks he has everything in front of him when in reality... You know, there's the dub right there. So let's go ahead and jump into clip number three. Now, clip number three here, I actually have my duo partner T Captain X send over a clip that perfectly shows the difference between Warzone 1 and Warzone 2. Starting off, he's playing this rooftop right here. He knows there's people up top, so he's just going to challenge here. He's playing his positioning pretty well. He knows he has cover. Now he's going to go ahead and refocus. He refocuses because his teammate said, hey, I just got it down in this building. Now, in Warzone 1, what do we do here? We fly over and we go in guns blazing. We go in slide canceling, breaking doors, trying to break cameras jump peeking bunny hopping whatever we have to do movement wise to get those downs and thirst but in warzone 2 it's all about positioning and even this slight differentiation right here as he pushes up he's not just going to break through this door you know in warzone 1 i probably break through this door right here and really push in but in warzone 2 he perfectly plays this window right here. Now, once again, he's starting to focus on that next enemy. And yes, we can still use movement in Warzone 2 to bail ourselves out of situations, which is what he does right here. He flicks back, he drops shots to take less damage, and he's able to get that knock, at which point he pushes in. So that's one of the differences, one of the major differences, probably the biggest difference between Warzone 1 and Warzone 2 is this little hesitation right here of pushing in, knowing that there's not as much outplay potential. So we play a little bit more positioning until we have to use movement at which point he just makes a play to win that gunfight and that's part of tcap being a really good player he also 100 percent guys he could have backed off this situation he could have gotten this down and the moment you're not in a good spot he could have pushed up the stairs he could have pushed over the edge instead he goes immediate for the drop shot and he's able to get that down to thirst let's go to take a look at clip number four here so clip number four here i told you in the beginning there were some that were good and some that we can learn from this is one that we can learn from so we actually just complete the stronghold i went overkill so I've got my Vaznev and my RPK. Now, as soon as I get the Stronghold, guys, I want to get out with it before this second wave comes in. If you get trapped in one of these Stronghold buildings, it's not good. So we actually go ahead and push out. And I'm going to go ahead and push right into here. Now, what we notice from the permanent UAV on the Stronghold is that we have people in this main building. Notice that we, we have one up top here that's on the roof, and we've got one on our level over by the buy station. So we've got to be a little bit careful. We're, we are aware of them. We're also aware of the fact that we've got bots behind us. So now there are two on that rooftop, and we're kind of tracking their movement here. We're tracking exactly what's happening. Now, notice there's three in that building right there. So now we got a full team. We're playing trios here. And I decide to go ahead and try to precision airstrike through the smoke. But by that time, they are already on our level here. They are on our level, and all of a sudden, we are now pinched between the bots behind us, and then we've got the team that's now fully on our level, very close together, playing, you know, super as a team. So right here, I go to challenge, and I end up just going down. And when we look at this scenario, we literally just completed Stronghold. I tend to rotate out of this. What we should have done, just learning from this, is right about now... I think we rotate all the way around this rock. I, because keep in mind, I do have a UAV. So once we get over to about this spot right here where my mouse is, I can pop that UAV and we know exactly where they push to. Instead, we just waited a little bit too long, not expecting them to push, not really taking them seriously. And by the time they got on top of us, there was nothing we could do. It was just too late. There's nowhere really to go. You know, I, I could have left TCAP there to die, but, like, I'm not just going to leave him there and run away. So, you know, we're just in a tough spot. It's just a mistake. We just lingered a little bit too long around the stronghold, and it cost us. Don't be afraid to disengage a fight and then re-engage a fight from a better angle if you have to. Because we could have 100% re-disengaged around here and then re-engage from whether it's you know, top of L building or over this way, whatever it may be. So let's go ahead and jump into clip number five here. Now, just to paint the picture with some important info, we're playing some trios. I just bought T Captain X back like 30 seconds ago. So he's landed looking for a gun, looking for a three plate. I looted a little bit more. Now I have enough for Grumpy Hogs, at which point we'll be at least all alive, but we're definitely not back, right? We're not good on guns. We're not good on three plate vests. And 
we don't have enough for guns. This was when the guns were 5,000, so we actually ended up buying a UAV here. Figuring out what's going on, I had a feeling there was a team close to us. Now, when we buy a UAV, it's important to understand where people are actually moving to. Watch these dots right here. So, no, if they're pushing away from us, we handle this different than what's going on right here, which is they are clearly pushing right towards us. They clearly know that we're here because of the double buyback. They cluster my building, so we know that they are going to be pushing us here. T notice that TCAP is starting Starting to work his way over to me, still trying to find a gun that he's comfortable with. And go back to clip number one. We talk about positioning, high ground, and cover. Now, a lot of people are going to be like, J you guys just camp in buildings right here. But, look, we don't have the advantage. They're pushing us, and we are not even close to being regained here. I mean, I don't have a gun that I'm comfortable with primary-wise. I have the wrap, but it's not exactly like that's the gun I'd like. I would like to have a primary or something different, but it's what I got to make work. So we're going to let them push us and try to play off of that. Try to catch them making a mistake and see if we can regain a little bit of momentum. Now, if we get a down and thirst or maybe two downs and thirst, we can then go push that. But until that point, we got to make them push us. Well, they pushed us. They got they got the sniper out. But this is where we talk about positioning is high ground and cover. I've got cover, so it's not a problem for me to be revived. Besides the fact that I just burned a few plates. Now, Grumpy Hog's going to do something that's really important here that you guys got to become better at. Which is when you fly back in, when you just got bought back... It's live pinging people, right? It is a huge advantage to know where these guys are because I know they are out in the open. I mean, Grumpy Hog is telling me, hey, he's rotating over to you. He's out in the open. Now I can confidently go challenge this guy. I know that he has no cover, and that's where we talk about cover is so important. Now, I'm broken. He's broken. I'm just going to re-challenge because I know that he's in a really bad spot. If I go down here, I can get revived. If he goes down here, he gets thirsted. Now, all of a sudden, we gain a little bit of momentum back in this fight. We're still not in a good spot. We're still not anywhere close to being able to, to go push these guys, but we're at least a little bit better. Now, one mistake that we did make here. Uh, you hear Grumpy shooting with his pistol. There was an MP7 right here, which I thought I had pinged, but I should have made very clear comm-wise. Like, hey, there's guns on the roof here. There's a sniper and an MP7 that you can use. The pistol's great, but we'd much rather have those guns. Now, he said they were on this buy station, so we just got to try to keep seeing what we can find. Now, this is where we start talking about positioning and rotations, right? We technically are in a good spot, but it's kind of a stalemate right here, right? So let's start to make a little bit of a move. That's Oh, it was a Lockman sub. Yeah, that's where. So now, all of a sudden, we've got guns, and we're in a much better spot. Now we start to split, and what I'm thinking, guys, is if I can play around to this, like this building right here, we can start to get a good crossfire on them and start to really put the pressure, knowing they're kind of stuck on this island. Well, I end up getting smoked in the back. Now, thankfully, there's no fall damage in the sense that you can't die that way, so I'm just going to go ahead, self-revive, try to get in before this precision airstrike, and just kind of full send it, and we're able to do that, but... If you guys notice, I don't have plates. So we're still t in a really tough spot here, not having plates. We're starting to lose momentum in this fight because, well, TCAP's got three plates. We've got a three-plate vest right there for Grumpy that he can grab. So he's going to have three plates, but I'm stuck with none. Now, I hear this guy challenging. End up going down. But he doesn't thirst, right? So this is where you don't oversell for the thirst. And when you try to oversell for the thirst sometimes, Grumpy's going to take care of him. Now, in that meantime, they are holding this stairwell. I'm just going to keep floating back. I'm not going to rush, right? I've still got plenty of time here, guys. I got to calculate it out. In Warzone 1, you had like 40 seconds before you end up dying here if you don't take a lot of damage afterwards. So I think it's about that. That's what it seems like. I've got plenty of time to get revived. Now, we still don't have plates in this scenario. You've got to be careful. But we've also got to, like, end this fight pretty quickly. So we know that there's one left. I don't, uh, I'm pretty sure we know that there's just one left. So what I end up doing is pushing around, and now we pinch this. This is a very aggressive play, but this fight's got to end. Or this fight's just going to keep dragging, and we're just going to keep burning through plates. So right here, I flank all the way around. Now we're finally able to get this down. We're able to get this thirst, and right there you see the team wipe finally. So there you see some good things, some bad things. We're definitely stuck in this building, but we play patient until we can get that momentum back, and then we go ahead and put the pressure on get that team wipe. So I hope you found today's video helpful. As I always say, let's get better today, and I will see you tomorrow.